heredity from parent to progeny. So what we are going to learn in this chapter is about heredity and inheritance and the process of evolution. So we see a great variety of life around us. The world is full of diverse organisms, various kinds of plants and animals. So there is a great variety, millions and millions species of animals are there. Sometimes we appreciate the similarity between the animals or similarity between the plants. Sometimes we appreciate the dissimilarities. Some, we see that some organisms are very simple. Some organisms are very complex. Means some organisms has to be such complex to live in this world. Certain organisms, they need not be that complex. They can live with a very simple and complex, very simple structure and form. So, here we see that how these organisms, this much variety has come into this world. So, there are so many doubts. Has everything, all the creatures, all the species have come into this existence at a glance, at a time or step by step? Then how are the steps? Is it a very quick and fast single step change or it is a slow and steady change? of these organisms level by level, level by level, time to time, time to time. Do you think it is a very slow process, what we call it as evolution? So there are so many doubts, many people have done lot of research and studies about these concepts and they got certain evidences and they proposed certain theories which are being accepted most of the, accepted by most of the world now and even now. Still, there are so many people, those who are not accepting the theories given by the people like Charles Darwin or uh, so other scientists. So now let us have a look at that, how the process of evolution and what are the other things like heredity and inheritance and all the concepts here. So now let us look at that new characters. And the variations. So what are these variations? So before we know what is a variation, let us look at the different characteristic features that we find differences among us. You may be having uh, your classmates 20, 25 or 30 in number who are studying along with you in the class. So do all have the same features? We are all humans. If you take 10 boys, all the boys are alike. No. Even though we have most similarity, all humans, they have certain similar characteristics. They will be having a specific weight, height, growth pattern, skin colors and all. But again, even though we are all human beings, even though you are all boys of age of 12 years or 11 years or 13 years in your class, at the same time you find some dissimilarities. So you find certain uh, differences in features. Even you take your parents, do you? You, are, you may be having certain features like your parent. You may be appearing like your mother or father or your aunt or your grandfather or grandmother. But do you have the exact features? No, we will find some differences. Eyes, different color skin and sometimes people hair will be also different color. Um, a brown in color certain people hair and a black in color. So there are variations. So here I am using the term variation. Generally, we can call it as a difference. Then what is the difference between the difference and variation? Variations are the differences in the characteristics of the closely related organisms is called as a variation, difference in characters. So both organisms will have the same character, but there is a slight difference that we call it as a variation. Now, the study of these variations in the process of evolution it has been studied by so many naturalists. So among these, the most remarkable work done by Gregor John Mendel. He was a botanist and the research done by this Gregor John Mendel, it has given a very good idea how the characters are inherited, passed from one generation to another generation by his famous pea plant experiments. Pea plant experiments 
So he conducted pea plant experiments not in the laboratory or in a research uh, station or, not, or in a university. He did not conduct these experiments, neither of those places he conducted these experiments in a monastery because as he is a, he was a monk in a monastery. So in the monastery garden, he conducted these experiments and he has chosen only the pea plant because it has got some contrast characteristic. At the same time, the lifespan of the pea plant is very small, very less. So by that, he can see number of generations in very less time. He can understand how the new generations are formed. If he has taken some plant or something which is having some 10 years or 20 years of life, then he cannot conduct the experiments for such a long duration. So that is the reason he selected the pea plants and conducted the experiments. Now, we are going to see some of the experiments conducted by Grigor John Mendel and let us see what were the conclusions or assumptions of those experiments. So, Mendel he has experimented on pea plants. He has experimented around 10,000 pea plants of 34 species. See how much work he has done on the pea plants. So, he observed so many characters, he found so many differences, variations among the pea plants. All are pea plants, but there are variations among the pea plants between one pea plant and the other pea plant and within the seeds or the pods of the same pea plant. So, here he observed and he made a list of seven contrast pair of characters that is for the study. So, let us look at the characters, what are those characters? The first thing about the seed, whether the seed is deeply wrinkled, seed is round or deeply wrinkled. Some seeds are round, some pea plant seeds are round, some pea plant seeds are deeply wrinkled. And color of the seed, albumen, cotyledon, whether it is pale yellow or bright yellow or orange color. So there are three variations. So that is the second contrast character, the color of the albumen, the seed that is endosperm. Color of the seed coat, how is the seed coat, whether it is white as if like the flower or sometimes the color of the seed coat may be violet uh, spotted without spotting or uh, brown color or a leather color or gray color, maybe different different colors are observed in the seed coat, color of the seed coat. Form of ripe pods, the pod which contain the peas after ripening, how the pod, the pod is just flat like this with the seeds inside or it will be having any compressions or constrictions like this. So here are the seeds. So here the skin is compressed like this. So some piece turn like this, some piece stay like this. This contrast character, this pair of contrast character, it was selected as one of the seven contrast characters which he has chosen. And the next one, unripe pods. How are the unripe pods? These are ripened pods. Unripe pods, how are they? Whether they have the green color or pale yellow color patches or green color patchy, patchy appearance or a plain color. And position of the flowers, whether they are axial, axial or terminal. Terminal in the sense on the straight stem on the top that is the terminal. Axial means on the side branches whether it is axial or terminal there is a difference. Here one more contrast pair of character. A length of the stem. Plants either long or lengthy plants or dwarf. That means the internodal space, space, space between the two nodes on a stem is less. If so it is called as a dwarf and if the length is more it is called as a tall plant. So, in again in the length of the stem, the contrast character is the length that is the tall plant and dwarf plant. So, these are the seven characteristics which he has chosen.